Hi, welcome back to OMG The Cloud. In our last episode of our TrueNAS series, a brand new series based around a free open source FreeBSD storage solution, we went ahead and set up a basic TrueNAS server in our virtual lab. What I wanna to do today is we're gonna set up a second one and this is gonna be in our second site. But before we get into that, I wanna throw up one more really heavy disclaimer. This series is in fact based around TrueNAS, which is a storage appliance. So it might sound a little odd for me to tell you that we're not actually using the core storage of this for most of our exercises. And I bring that up because the only supported method for using TrueNAS virtualized is to use pass-through disks. We're not using pass-through disks in these lab exercises, we're using virtual disks. Now, I, I wanna make this abundantly clear, that is not supported, that's not gonna be performant at all, it's not gonna be good for your data. All of these exercises, we're really exploring the core functionality of TrueNAS, showing you how you can configure things like site-to-site -site replication, and NFS shares and things like that. We're not expecting it to be performant. We're not expecting the data that lives on these virtual disks to be durable. This is just a lab. So we're exploring things that you'll be able to reproduce in a production environment, which should be on physical hardware in a properly supported configuration. Now, if you do want to do a virtualized TrueNAS deployment, it's critical that you use pass-through disks and do not use these virtual disks. Now, with that disclaimer out of the way, I'd like to refer you back over to our PFSense series where we set up multiple PFSense servers in multiple sites and we did an IPsec tunnel between them so they could talk. This is just like how you would set up a real WAN if they're actually internet facing, but this is in a lab, so it's perfect practice for you. Before we build this out, I just wanna give you a couple pointers. I'm not gonna step through all the changes that needed to be done on your PFSense server because you should have already gotten familiar with that in that series, but I will give you a couple hints. If you look back on that series, you're gonna notice we did a IPsec tunnel, but we specifically were only doing traffic from the site two DMZ to the site one LAN. We were just testing that communication. So I'll give you a couple hints. First thing you're gonna to need to do is between those two sites, you're gonna go ahead and need to add a second phase two tunnel that is gonna go between the server site one VLAN and the server site two VLAN, okay? So you're gonna to need to create that review the firewall rules to make sure that you left them in a state where you can actually ping across those two networks once that tunnel does come up. Now, we did an any any rule, so you shouldn't really need to make any adjustments in there, but I'm just calling it out because that's something that trips people up a lot of times. So once you've got that set up, I also want you to look back on our last video from TrueNAS if you have any questions on how to do that basic installation for TrueNAS. So I'm just gonna step through one of the quick differences in our environment, you know, just a basic configuration here. And really the only change you're gonna do to that last one, besides the naming and things like that, is you're gonna attach it to your second site server VLAN. So this will be server site two for me, where my original one is in the OMG servers VLAN, this guy here. So we're putting it here in site two, and this is going to effectively put it on that network. And then that way it will require the IPsec tunnel for the two servers to communicate. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and just skip ahead to where we've got that base set up. And referring to the original video, go ahead and create that storage pool as well. Create a media data set. And then once you've got to that point, let's go ahead and resume here. And we're gonna do a little testing to make sure that IPsec tunnel is good. And then we're gonna work on some replication. So why don't we pause here for a minute? I'm gonna give you a chance to go check that out. Okay, so once you're all set and you have your second TrueNAS server set up, let's go ahead and just make sure we have good distinction between the two. Let's just rename the host name on each of these. So uh, in each of the TrueNAS servers, just go to network and global configuration. And let's just give them both something unique. So I'm just gonna do the first one as TrueNAS-S1 for site one. And then in my second one, my new one, let's just rename that one as well. I'm gonna call that TrueNAS-S2, site two. All right, so with those two named and set up, and I did go ahead and set up the storage pool just the same as I did the first one. 
Uh, I created a pool, I created a media data set. Now we're ready to test. So now is the moment of truth on your IPsec tunnel. Let's see if you can communicate between the two. Let's start from our first original TrueNAS server. On the left bottom, just go to shell. And let's just see if we can ping across to the new TrueNAS server. So I know that mine is on 10.2.10.100 and I can ping it, that's good. It's going across the IPsec tunnel. Just the same in the second one. Let's go to shell and see if we can ping back to site one. So that would be 10.1.10.100. And I can see it, terrific. So we have traffic flowing across the IPsec tunnel. Again, if, you, if you're stuck on any of that kind of stuff, hit me up in the comments. I'll see if I can nudge you in the right direction. Definitely reference the PFSense series. We built all this out in detail. Um, it, was, it was a really good learning experience for you. So I really recommend that you get proficient with that. It'll save you a lot of time if you're able to troubleshoot these things yourself. And now that we have this up and running, now we need the two TrueNAS servers to be able to talk to one another. So what we're gonna do is, the TrueNAS servers are essentially gonna exchange key pairs. And once they have that, that's how they communicate. And once they have that, then they can establish a secure SSH session between the two, and they can send snapshots and things like that across. Now, before we do any of that, we probably better get some data in there. I'm just gonna do it from the command line. So I'm gonna start with TrueNAS S1, my first site, and I'm gonna get into the media share. Don't uh, pool media. Okay, and it's empty as we expect. So I'm just gonna pull down a older version of Ubuntu. This is really the easiest way to do it. Just use that wget command. This will give us a good chunk of data to replicate. So we see we've got, uh, I've got an ISO file. It's about 700 megabytes. And so now what we wanna do is set up a synchronization job so that this data is always going to stay replicated and in sync over on our second site. That's a perfect kind of HA situation, right? Offsite backup, automated, it's secure, it's running over a secure SSH session. Sounds pretty good. Let's get that going. We're gonna set up a replication task. And this is going to initiate a lot of the other pieces that need to be done in order to make this happen. So let's step through that really quick. Let's go to tasks and go to replication tasks. I'm on my first TrueNAS server here, by the way, the site one. And let's go ahead and add a new replication task. The source location of that data is going to be on this system, okay? And let's drill down in our folder structure and find that media pool that we created, okay? And then our destination, it's gonna say on a different system, okay? So we don't have any SSH sessions created quite yet, so we're gonna let the wizard create one for us. So drop down, hit create new, and let's call it something sensible. So I'm gonna call this TrueNAS S2 dash SSH. Because they're both TrueNAS servers, they can do this key exchange without you having to do this all by command line. And the TrueNAS URL, so we're gonna to wanna to give it the HTTPS and IP address of the remote site. So 10.2.10.100 is my site two TrueNAS server. Username root, and go ahead and give it the password for that instance. And private key, we're gonna go ahead and generate a new key. Once you have all these things filled out, you can just hit create SSH connection and it is going to generate everything else that you need on the back end. So with that done, it now has a secure tunnel between the two FreeNAS servers. Again, going across that IPsec tunnel, which theoretically, in a real world environment, this would be actually over a WAN. Or... And now for our destination, we're gonna also drill in. Remember, we have the same layout on the other side. So we're gonna drill in and find that. This, this is representative of the second site. Uh, so let's hit next. And then now we're gonna have some scheduling options. So run on a schedule or run once. Well, typically you're gonna to wanna to schedule this, right? So you can run this once a day. By default, it's gonna to wanna to go at midnight. You can also drop this down and change it. You can do custom if you wanna run in once an hour, whatever you feel like doing, you can do that, okay? And then snapshot lifetime. This is important too. This is using ZFS and it's, it's leveraging its file system replication process. So it makes a snapshot of that volume, a ZFS snapshot and it's going to ship that snapshot over to the remote site. So what this is telling us here is, do we want to have the remote site stay in the same synchronization pattern as what you define over here? Typically, you're gonna to wanna to say same as source. Um, if it is a true archive on the remote site, you could say never delete, which means you would have to manually go in and delete snapshots when you want them to expire. So let's do start replication. 
Now it says no snapshots yet. Remember, we set this up to run at midnight. Well, we probably don't want to wait till midnight. We'd probably like to get on with it. So I'm going to expand this out in the drop down. Hit run now and continue. And it is started. So we see that that replication task is running in the background. I just want to take a look at the traffic on that IPsec tunnel. And yeah, we can see, in fact, it's going out pretty heavy on our IPsec tunnel from site one. So let's go back to tasks and our replication tasks. And it says it's already finished. OK, so if that's true, let's pop over to our second node here. This is site two. And if we go to storage pools, now we know we have our file system here. And let's look at snapshots. Oh, OK, there's a snapshot created there. And this here is going to be representative of what is from the source site here. And we can see that there's data there. If we go back to the pool, you see that it has 600 and 90 megabytes consumed. So it definitely pushed data over here. And then secondary, if we go back to our first site and we take a look at our storage and snapshots, we see we have the same snapshot. ZFS snapshots are really the heart of how a ZFS file system works. When you create a snapshot, you're now telling the file system, this is all the information you need to build the file system from a point in time up until now. So you can stack on as many snapshots as you want, and they are just the deltas, the differences between what changed on that file system since you last took a snapshot. So that shows us how we can create a highly available offsite backup of our data sets inside of TrueNAS without having to manually copy, without having to use rsync or anything like that, where there's any sort of potential for corrupting the file system or anything like that. This uses ZFS snapshots. This is rock solid. This is the way to do your offsite backups. You can restore them quite easily through the GUI as well. Uh, so this is really a great way to go. Um, I think this is a great place to stop for today. We essentially got two TrueNAS servers that are able to replicate their data. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please drop those in the comments below. I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you enjoy this content. Let me know what else you'd like to see in this series. Otherwise, I will see you next week.